good? Okay. First of all, I just want to make, make a correct, quick correction from last week. Patrick sent me a text and letting me know that I had said Deuteronomy 2911 when in fact it was Deuteronomy 2811. Oh. Lord bless him. And uh, he just he's just watching out for me because he knows how important I consider to get things right. Yes. Yeah. Right? And when speaking for the Lord. So that's Deuteronomy 2811 in your notes. And it's the scripture, the Lord shall make you plenteous in goods. Okay? But it, it did say Deuteronomy 28 in my notes, but for some reason I said Deuteronomy 29. You'll catch that from time to time I do that. <laughs> so should it happen again, I can't promise it won't. Have mercy on me and forgive me and just go on ahead and just take a few of the words out of that verse, Google them, and then the correct reference is going to come up and then jot that in your notes. Okay? Deal? Okay. All right. When we were away, um, I went with Patrick one morning as um, he went uh, to fish off the rocks. And... um, uh, there are dolphins all jumping in the water, right? Where like, they're just like, whoo, you know, dumping, jumping in the water, right? Where, where he's trying to catch fish. And though I thought it was just so beautiful to watch them, Patrick had other words for it uh, because they were scaring all his fish away. And so, um, but while he fished, I just sat with my iPod and something I was reading uh, under my big beach, beach umbrella, my beach chair. <laughs> Hardly no one was there because um, it's the morning and that's the only way I would go. I'm not a fan of the wardrobe on the beach. So anyways, I was sitting there and um, the Lord brought some things to my attention and I felt directed to share some of those things with you today. And I believe next week as well. Okay, we'll see what the Lord says about that. Alrighty? Okay. Prayer. Prayer is absolutely essential. It's how we communicate with the Lord. It's it's how we inquire of him. It's how we hear from him. It's how we get wise direction. Direction that's always right and always produces. Amen. Okay, if we'll follow through and do what he said. Okay, it's how we use our faith to get things done in our lives and in our world. To get situations and circumstances (coughs) turned around and put right. Okay, it's how we, remember we talked about this before, it's how we, the boots on the ground here, okay, scripture says, on the earth but not of it, stay in contact with military control, who sees everything. Okay, remember that whole thing with military, I totally made that up. Okay, it's a made up term, but it was the same idea as air traffic control, right, where you, who they guide us down our planes up and down because they can see everything and we in the plane can't, okay? And we refer to God like military control where we get our direction from him, um, direction that is best we heed because he knows things we don't, okay? And if we want to survive and thrive here, we need to know what he knows when we need to know it. Amen. Right? Okay. So, now, um, yeah, so we covered all that on uh, Word Mondays, the uh, air traffic control thing. Now, sp- actually, speaking of Word Mondays, Word Mondays, for those of you who have not taken, is a 24 weeks, and I'm on the recording too, 24 weeks of foundational teaching that goes right back to the basics and builds a solid foundation from the Word of God, removing the wrong believing that's made its way into our foundations as well, okay? <coughs> creating shaky foundations that have a hard time standing when pressure comes, okay? And um, so um, I believe that God has been directing me, and, and I'll, I'll keep you updated on it, to run another 24 weeks this coming fall. Yes. But this is what I need you to do. Um, there's no sense in everybody's already been through it just being the same people. You can get the links for that. Yeah. Okay. But if there are people in your life that have asked you and said, something's happened with you, like something, what? And you're going, well, you know, I've been learning some things bring them with you, tell them about it, whatever. So we can just, because this is so necessary, especially in this hour, that God's own grab a hold of what he said in his word so we can actually walk it out in this hour that we live in. Okay? All right. So I'll keep you updated uh, on that as we go. Okay. So God talks to us through this book. 
okay? And Patrick and I heard this while we were away, and some things just stick. And um, it was this. When you're wanting to hear God, and you're wanting to know what he's saying, the first place you go is here Ooh, to this man. book. Yeah. God has already said many things to us in this book. So find out what he said to you from in here, okay? And then if he wants to say anything else, he will. This first, okay? So many of God's own have got it switched around, right? They'll go everywhere else and go here last, if at all. Okay, running around instead, you know, desiring somebody to give them a, you know, prophetic word or that, you know, God speak them in a vision or a dream or audibly or some kind of sign or something, right? Something, anything other than having to search it out in here, okay? Um, now, we don't word it that way, but okay, but it's a big mistake and dangerous because without this being first for you so that you're filled with it, you won't know if all the other things are really God when you hear them and see them. You will not be able to tell. Okay? And the devil can sell you down the river. And all because you wouldn't listen. Right. And search out God's word like he told you to and give it your attention. Proverbs right. 4, 20 to 22. Yeah. Okay? But Dorothy, how will I know the difference between voices? Because it's having a foundation built with this that produces the ability to know the difference between voices. Amen. Okay, and as you keep putting oh. his word, the scriptures, yeah. in you, choosing to believe it and ordering your life in agreement with it, you will just come to know. Amen. It just is, right? Okay, so now, now, if you're not there yet, okay, don't fuss and certainly don't say it from your mouth. Okay, with the declarations we're making here and that we make with the tithe, they're powerful, okay, because God has given us powerful mouths, right? They're powerful. <coughs> and if you go saying stuff out of your mouth, like, I just never know if it's God talking to me or not. Well, especially if you say so and keep saying so, right? We speak toxic things into our lives and then we get the outcome of them. No, no. Don't talk that junk out your mouth. Just keep putting this yeah. in. Keep choosing to believe it and not argue with it. And keep ordering your life in agreement to it. And you watch. Amen. It'll come. I remember being there. I remember when our second son, he's 30 now, but when he was a year old, I remember there was this man in our church back where he lived in Stratford that um, I used to think, Lord, I want to be able to hear God like he does. I remember that. And God knows your heart. He wants you to hear him really well, too, right? And so, but you get there. It's a process you learn. You learn, but it's all about putting his word in you and making it first place, okay? So it's having that solid foundation built uh, in you, built with this, that produces the ability to hear God yeah, accurately, right. right? I don't know how it does it. It just does. God's word is alive and powerful. He wasn't kidding. Hallelujah. Okay? And to know the difference between voices. All right? Okay. So prayer. Have you ever felt like you've prayed and prayed about something and you wonder if, you know, if, you know, what you've been believing for is ever going to come to pass? Okay? Whether it's, you know, direction you're needing or something you need to know or a healing or provision of some kind, your kids, whatever it is. Okay? There could be many factors, things that are affecting that. Okay, and there are a couple of those factors that I feel directed to talk to you about. There's a whole, whole lot more than these ones, but for whatever reason, I'm gonna deal with these, okay? So let's first quickly revisit what I left you with at the end of last week, okay? So remember I talked about making prayer available at the end of each service here each week, okay? Where we can pray in agreement with the word and you concerning the thing that showed up for you that week. Okay. And how, if a circumstance arises in your life during the week, we encourage you don't just wait till Sunday, but to right away, get on it right away, get to the business of pulling out the Bible, finding the scriptures, finding them, finding what God said in here about your situation. Okay. Write it down. Okay, and then keep putting those words, God's words about it, in your eyes, in your ears. It'll go down into the ground of your heart every day. Ooh. Keep putting it in you, in you, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, so many want to skip past this part. The lazy part in people want to bypass it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then wonder why 
what they've prayed and prayed about has not shown up. Okay, this can be one of the factors because they think they're praying in faith, but they're not. Because there's no fresh dose of scripture put in for faith to come, like is needed to get the thing taken care of. Okay, finding it. Finding it in the word is necessary for effective prayer. Right. Prayer that gets things done. Amen. Why? Because first of all, you've got to know God's will in the thing. And you've got to know what he says about it because you've got to know what to believe about it, what not to believe, right? Whether or not you can believe for that thing you're asking him for. Like, I remember that example with Al, right? That he gave you in the chocolate chips and the foot massage while watching golf that I did not say I would do. <laughs> so he could believe he received all he wanted, but it was not my will. And I did not speak a single word committing to the doing of any of it. Okay, we understand that and we laugh and we understand that in the natural, okay? But it's that way in the spiritual, okay? And so remember last week, we talked also about having that solid trust in the Lord, confident of Alan, his love yeah. and his care for you and how that matters, mm -hmm. right? And remember how we had, we talked about how Jesus had to say to his disciples who walked with him every day in that whole, you know, storm and sleeping in the boat thing, right? Why are you so afraid, he said to them, do you still have no faith and confidence in me? Mark 4.40, okay? So you can't ask anything of the Lord in prayer that you are not absolutely confident that you can ask because you are certain that it's his will for you. Hallelujah. Okay? How do we know that? God told us, 1 John 5, 14 and 15. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, According to his will, he hears us. Amen. And if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, we know we have the petitions that we ask to him. Okay, there's that certainty. Okay. Confidence is attached to knowing what God's will is on a thing. Right. Okay. On that thing that just showed up for you. Okay. And praying in agreement with it, God's will on that thing. Okay. And that you found in here. Okay? There should be no confidence in praying your own will. And expecting God to kind of sweep up and get in line and cooperate with you on it and go on to provide whatever it is you're asking for. That is not the way this rolls. Right? He's Lord. Remember? He's boss. Okay. So we got to take some time to get up this book and to search and to ask God to help us to find what God says about the situation you're looking at. Okay, and what does God say about those who will go through the effort to do that when a circumstance arrives, arises for them? Those who will pull out the Bible and find God's words about it? Watch this. This is what he says. Proverbs 4.22. His word is life to those who find it. And health to all their flesh. Amen. So the words he said in here about a circumstance will not be life to everybody. Ah, only those who will take the time to find those words of his. So when you take the effort to find them, you can be confident that they will be life to you, life to your circumstances, and health to all your flesh if it's healing you need. Okay? That's why I have my stack of scripture pages on different things. I found them on purpose. And I typed them out, and now I found them, and I have them. Right? And that's why I take them with me, you know, to the BC, to BC when we're seeing the kids. I take them with me to the hospital when Patrick gets creative with tractors. I take them with me to <laughs> Naples, right? I'm not going anywhere without them. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm serious about this. Okay? Right. And so this is why I'm encouraging you to find them through the week. Okay, not having them found for you because life comes to the one who does the finding of them according to God here in Proverbs 4. Wow. Okay? And we're going to have you put them in your eyes and in your ears and believe in them and then come in on Sunday for agreement in prayer. Okay? If you haven't already taken care of it by then. Amen? Amen. Okay. So like I said last week, it's time to get stuff done. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing. Don't take a break. Don't take a break from standing on God's word daily, doing what needs to be done. Amen. Don't take it, not even on holidays. Patrick and I know this by now, 
The devil likes to pull stuff to see what he can get away with and usually right at the beginning of a holiday, right? And so he'll see, he wants to see if you're just going to slack off because you are on a holiday, right? He tried it with us again this year. But we just put a stop to it immediately. Right? right? Yeah. It's like the yeah. song we were singing, at the name of Jesus, yeah. everything bows. Yes. Once yeah. you understand the yes. authority you have in the name of yeah. Jesus, Amen. you can tell it, think, not on my watch. Yeah. Get yeah. out. Power. And it obeys yeah. you. Amen. God gave you that power yes. of his to do exactly right. that. Yes. Was he lying? No. 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 Exaggerating? No. 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 And uh, so anyway, <clears throat> um, I just simply, do you know, when uh, I had my scripture pages with me and with the scriptures I had found, and so they're life to me, right? You see why I need them. And I just applied those scriptures several times each day until every bit of that nonsense was gone. It didn't take long, right. but a couple days, right? And Ooh. some of that nonsense that was going on, I still haven't told Patrick. He's just finding about it, out about it this morning <laughs> when we were there. But I refuse, this is why, I refuse to even dignify it with my attention. Yeah. I just took the word, used it like a weapon, like God told us to, and yeah. sent that junk on its way out of my life. Amen. Right. All right? Okay. All right. We were just, and I remember too, I'm going to add this in here, because if you remember we were driving, I don't know where we were driving, we were down in Florida, driving somewhere, and Patrick and I were talking about this, and just reminding ourselves that you can never afford to be on holiday from fighting battles, and winning, and getting victories, mm -hmm. because the devil does not just pause his efforts against you because you're on holidays, no, he'll mop the floor with you, yeah. if you don't tend to things immediately, right, mm -hmm. no time to slack off and hope he cooperates with your holiday schedule, <laughs> Right? And here's the thing. When the enemy comes at you, we know this by now. When the enemy comes at you, it's unwise to cooperate with them by thinking or saying the wrong things. Absolutely. We know that. Okay? But it is just as unwise to do nothing. Mm -hmm. To think it will just go away or straighten itself out. Okay? Doing nothing will get you to the exact same spot as doing things that actively assist the enemy in working against you by giving him place. Yes. Maybe just not as quickly. Yes. Okay? You have only one <coughs> wise option. You keep the word rich in you. Fight with it and win. Ooh. Even on holidays. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. Okay. All right. So let's open our Bibles now. Let's go to Jeremiah 42. Because we hear our word Sundays, we bring our Bibles. <laughs> And we open them at every opportunity because we know that that too is part of making the effort to find his words, right? Because they can be found while you're hearing the word preached too. When a scripture is spoken and all of a sudden something comes to life on the inside of you about that verse and you write it down. Oh yeah. Okay. So here, uh, Jeremiah 42. Let me know if you're there. You there? Okay. So here in this chapter, we see... God's own is seeking, they're seeking his direction on something. Now, now we do that through prayer. Okay, we go straight to the Father in the name of Jesus and we pray to him, the Father, to get his direction, what he says to us on a thing. Okay, but Jeremiah 42 is before the cross. Before the cross happens, so it's a prophet, the priest, and the king who would hear from God for the people. And so finding out something from God then <coughs> involved going to one of them who would hear from God for them. Okay, so this is the account, and in this account, they go to Jeremiah the prophet. Okay, now watch. Let's start verse 1. I'm going to read through this whole chapter. Now all the captains of the forces, jo uh, Johanan, the son of Korea, not the country. Um, J J yeah, all these fellas and all these people <laughs> from the least to the greatest came near and said to Jeremiah the prophet, please let our, our petition be acceptable to you and pray for us to the Lord your God. Now notice it's interesting that um, it says the Lord your God. So because all of these were all to have been God's people. But they refer to him as the Lord Jeremiah's God. So apparently in their hearts... Something happened along the way. He's not Lord to them. Okay? Okay, so pray to us, pray for us to the Lord your God for all this remnant, since we are left but a, but a few of many, as you can see. Now, so there's, you might think that this might have something to do with him not being the Lord. 
So he can't protect them like he wants to be able to, so their numbers are diminishing. Okay? Verse 3, okay, so they go on to say, pray for us that the Lord your God, again, they say it again, right? They're serious about this, that the Lord your God may show us the way in which we should walk and the thing we should do. Then Jeremiah the prophet said to them, I have heard. Indeed, I will pray to the Lord your God according to your words. Seems Jeremiah is reminding them that he's supposed to be their Lord too. Right. I will pray to the Lord your God according to your words, and it shall be that whatever the Lord answers you, I will declare to you, I will keep nothing back from you. Meaning, I'll say what he said. I'll tell you what he said. Verse 5, so, so they said to Jeremiah, let the Lord be a true and faithful witness between us if we do not do according to everything which the Lord your God sends us by you. Okay, now, here again, they say the Lord your God again. So, okay, you know that this has got disaster written all over it already, right? Because just by the choice of that one word, your words matter. And just by that choice, that one word, your, heads us up that they do not consider him their Lord. He's not boss for them. So what are the chances that they're going to listen and do what he answers them through Jeremiah? Right? It's a big not likely. Okay, let's keep going. Verse 6. They go on to say that we're going to do everything that you tell us, what everything that God speaks to you through, through you, whether it is pleasing to us or displeasing. We will obey the voice of the Lord our God. Right now they say our, right? Look at that. Maybe they got the memo by now. Right. It says, now he says, now we will obey the Lord, voice of the Lord our God to whom we send you, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. Okay, so they do know what goes well for them when they obey. They do know that much. Okay, now we may chuckle, but this one word, your, has exposed the conditions of the condition of their hearts. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, Luke 6, 45. Your choice of words in things matters. And they will produce for you, whether you believe it or not. Okay, it's a law God kicked into motion when he set this whole thing up. And it's working whether you think so or not. Okay, verse 7. And it happened after 10 days that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Okay, so 10 days. Sometimes time passes before the Lord speaks to you on a thing and shows you what to do. Okay, but he will speak to you if you have asked him. Okay, verse 8. Then he, Jeremiah, called Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces which were with him, and all the people from the least even to the greatest, and said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, to whom you sent me to present your petition before him. If you will still remain in this land, then I will build you and not pull you down. I will plant you and not pluck you up. For I relent concerning the disaster that I have brought upon you. Okay, so now just, just wait a second here. So number one, first thing, God tells them to stay put. This is his instruction to them. <coughs> stay put. Don't go anywhere. Stay right here in this land. That's right. Okay, now the other thing I want to quickly touch on too is that we know by now what is meant by the disaster I have brought upon you when God says that. Okay, we understand some things now. Okay, God is the righteous judge of all the earth and his role is to pass judgment that allows the destroyer access. Amen. God is not the destroyer. He's the righteous judge. Amen. Okay. But it doesn't say any of that in there, Dorothy, right there. No, it doesn't. Which is why we need to be familiar with the whole book. We take the whole of Scripture. okay, And we have seen it from the Word over and over and over through Scripture. okay. We see the way it works. God's role is to pass judgment. If you need that link sent to you again, I'll send it to you. But God's role is to pass judgment to those who have had opportunity after opportunity to do right but won't. And having to eventually allow the destroyer to destroy. Okay, so we know that by now. So anytime we see this kind of thing, we already know what that's all about. Correct? Yes. So God goes on to tell them through Jeremiah, verse 11. Do not be afraid of the king of Babylon. Do not be afraid of the king of Babylon of whom you are afraid. Do not be afraid of him, says the Lord. Now, are you seeing this? Despite them not even considering him their Lord. God still, he still um, gives them his wisdom on what to do. 
right? He could say, oh, sure, now you come to me. Go pound salt, right? No. He was serious, okay, when he said, because he also said this in his word. He said, if any man lack wisdom, any man lack wisdom, he is to ask of God who will give generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him, James 1.5. Okay? And the Lord goes on to say, he says to the people, he says, for I'm with you to save you and deliver you from his hand, from this king of Babylon. Okay, verse 12, and I will show you mercy. Oh, there it is, right? That's it right there. It's his mercy on them again, despite all their stupid actions. He said, I will show you mercy that he, the king of Babylon, may have mercy on you and cause you to return to your own land. So God's got a plan to get them back to their own land if they will just listen and do what he tells them. Okay. Now again, as we're listening to these accounts here in scripture, you're listening for you too, right? Okay, verse 13. But if you say, Jeremiah goes on to say what God has said, but if you say, we will not dwell in this land, disobeying the voice of the Lord your God, saying, no, we're going to go to the land of Egypt. I'm Dorothy translation here. We're going to go to the land of Egypt where we will see no war, nor hear the sound of the trumpet, nor be hungry for bread, and there we will dwell. Okay, so these guys were going to go on and choose their own path. They felt they knew better. Egypt instead of staying put. Okay, verse 15. Then hear now the word of the Lord, O remnant of Judah. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, if you wholly set your faces to enter Egypt and go to sojourn there, sojourn means to dwell for a time, to temporarily dwell, then it shall be that the sword which you feared shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt. He's warning them, don't go there. This is going to happen if you do. The famine which you're afraid of shall follow close after you there in Egypt, and there you're going to die. He's, there's a reason he's telling them to stay put. Okay? And notice that their plan is only to dwell there temporarily. We'll just go there for a little while, compromise for a little while. We're not going to stay there. Okay? That's right. Everybody wow. look at me. Preach Everybody look girl. at me. Pulling that stunt. Yes. Oh. Dwelling temporarily oh, in the my. wrong place. Woo. And God cannot protect you there. And you can be destroyed there. You have right. no guarantee that you're coming out on the other side of that choice. Wow. Okay. You go off on your own path, especially where he specifically told you not to go. And he just can't protect you there. Are you hearing me? It's Amen. not because he doesn't want to protect you. That's he, why he warned you not to do it. Yes. Verse 17. So it shall be with all the men who set their faces to go to Egypt to sojourn there. They shall die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. And none of them shall remain or escape from the disaster I will bring upon them. Again, we understand what that means now. Right? God is going to have to pass judgment, allowing the destroyer, Satan, to destroy. It is Satan that comes but to steal, kill, and destroy, the Bible says. Okay, that's all he does. Anything you see in your life that's got to do with stealing anything from you, killing, destroying, all the devil, never God, ever. We've got to get that right in our believing, right. or we'll start blaming God for stuff he did not do, and you would swear there was no devil on the planet. Okay, so he, God is going to have to pass judgment, allowing the destroyer to destroy due to their defiance and rebellion. But he warned them. Okay, verse 18. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as my anger and my fury have been poured out on the habits of, inhabitants of Jerusalem, so my fury will be poured out in you when you enter Egypt. Again, he's passing judgment. You shall be an oath, an astonishment, a curse, and a reproach, and you shall see this place no more. Verse 19. The Lord has said concerning you, O remnant of Judah, do not go to Egypt. Know certainly that I have admonished you this day. For if, for you were, now watch this, <coughs> verse 20, for you were hypocrites in your hearts when you sent me to the Lord your God saying, pray for us, pray for us to the Lord our God concerning and according to all that the Lord your God says to declare to us, we will do it. Okay. 
And I have this day declared it to you, but you have not obeyed the voice of the Lord your God or anything he has sent you by me. Now, therefore, know, know certainly that you shall die by the sword, by famine and by pestilence in the land where you desire to go and dwell. Yikes. <clears throat> right? And do you know what they actually respond to him? Like, I'd be shaking in my boots if I was them. You know what they actually respond to him? And it shows how wicked their hearts have become and how arrogant. Next chapter, Jeremiah 43. Now it happened, verse 1, when Jeremiah had stopped speaking to all the people, all the words of the Lord their God, for which the Lord their God had sent to them, all these words that Azariah, the son of that guy, and that fellow, and that one, and all the proud men spoke, saying to Jeremiah, you speak falsely. The Lord our God has not sent you to say, do not go to Egypt to dwell there. Uh-huh. But Baruch, the son of Neriah, has sent has set you against us. So now they're making up stuff, okay? We think this guy Baruch has set you against us to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans that they may put us to death and carry us away captives to Babylon. Okay, now they're making stuff up. So Jehanan, the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces and all the people would not obey the voice of the Lord to remain in the land of Judah. Now, these are God's own. His people, his own acting like this and talking like this. It's not the heathen, it's his own acting like this. It's not the ones who don't have a relationship with God. No, it's his own. Now, why would these accounts be in scripture? God is clear why they are. And he said this, 1 Corinthians 10, 11. Now these things happened to them as an example and warning to us. They were written for our instruction to admonish and equip us upon whom the ends of the ages have come. New, New Living Translation says, to warn us who live at the end of the age. Yes, yes. That's us mm. as we head down this final stretch and things get about to be wrapped up. Yeah. Okay? Mm. And no kidding, right? There are those of God's people all over the globe acting just like this. That's right. Yeah. Right? Maybe giving it more spiritual sounding words, okay? But it's the same rebellion in the heart and the same refusal to yield to God's plan when they don't prefer it. And it's going to come with consequences in this hour too. Oh, God. And no one's going to be able to say they didn't know right. because it was even in the manual that they were supposed to be familiar with. Okay, and we understand that in the natural, right? Because how many know that when you're driving down the road at a speed far greater than what the signs along that road indicate you can drive, and then you're when stopped by a police officer citing, oh, but I didn't know what the speed was along here, will not fly. Because <laughs> if you're in a vehicle and you're driving on this road, it was your job to have read the signs and to know. It's God's people's job to know the manual. Okay? And so scripture there says, and all the proud men. Okay, there's the problem. Pride. Right? We know better than God. We're going to ask as long as he tells us what we're wanting to hear, hoping to hear, we'll listen. Otherwise, we're going to do what we think is best. Or oh, we won't say it like that. We'll call it something else. Right? We'll accuse the deliverer of the message instead, right, of wrongdoing. Tell him he got it wrong pride rebellion okay and it is a proud and arrogant today who when they don't like the truth call you the bad guy paint you as the problem the one who's doing wrong by speaking falsely okay and then so then these ones here they actually go on to form this complete lie to justify their their choices they accuse jeremiah of allowing another man to influence him to deliver that message that jeremiah's intention is actually to destroy them to harm god's people and to see them destroyed right and that he's a danger to them and then they actually go on and they do their own thing disaster okay these of god's own in jeremiah 42 had a serious case of wouldn't listen and before we say, yeah, no kidding, right? When we can't be bothered, right, to take the time to find scriptures, because it's life to those who find it, in God's word for our situation and giving our attention to them so that the faith can come, so that it can be life to us. But jump right over instead into praying and declaring instead and then expect God to perform for us. It's the same serious case of wouldn't listen. 
if there are things that we are needing and wanting from the Lord, we've got to listen to, like we talked to the kids about here, we've got to listen to and do what he told us in his word to do. Okay, so there is a way laid out in God's word, if we will read it and do it, that will make our prayer effective and get the job done. Okay, now we're going to have to stick with it, not quit either. Persist, right? That's another part of the way that God laid out in his word. Okay, and sometimes, sometimes uh, frustration in not seeing the results to our prayers has to do with us thinking that we know more than we actually do. Our hearts are right, but there are things that we don't yet know, like we need to know them. Oh, but we can learn. Nice. <laughs> we can learn, and God is ready and eager to help us learn them. Okay, and we're going to talk more about that next week, right? It simply requires being teachable so that we can know. Okay? Okay, so we've got to listen to how God shows us to do it in his word, and we've got to listen to what he showed us or said to us when we prayed about it, and then do that. Okay, it comes back to whatever he says to you, do it. Do it. Okay, but what we don't do is decide that we're going to, you know, what we're going to do is going to be based on whether or not we like his answer or not. Okay? Right. Asking us that we truly want to know, but really aren't going to do anything that we don't like or agree with anyway. Okay, that, that, that's what God called, what the, God called the ones in this Jeremiah 42, a hypocrite in the heart. Okay, and then waiting for the answer, the thing you prayed about to show up, but refusing to do what he told you to do when you asked him in prayer and then wondering where God went and getting mad at him and wondering why there's not the manifestation of the thing you're believing for. How many of God's own are doing that today? Asking God, hearing his answer to them, but won't listen to do from what he answered them. Or pretending they didn't hear his response to them because they didn't like that one. And yet all put out and upset that they don't yet have what they're believing for. Okay? And those are the exact kinds of actions that will allow the devil to get involved in your life. No good comes of that, as we saw in this account in scripture. And then there are situations where there are those who are seeking God on a thing, especially on those bigger things, the weightier things. And God knows ahead that they don't really want to know his answer. He knows their heart. They're looking for a certain answer, so their heart isn't right, and it's not submitted and obedient to him, right? No matter how much they try to present themselves as though, you know, like it is. Okay? And so many times when they walk away and say, I didn't hear God tell me anything, it's, it's simply because he couldn't tell them. Because they wouldn't value what he said. And God is not about to put valuable things before those who won't treat them that right. way. Yes. He tells you not to do that either. Mm -hmm. Right? Matthew 7, 6. Do not give that which holy to the dogs. Do not throw your pearls before pigs, for they will trample them under, your feet, under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Mm -hmm. Right? He doesn't give you an instruction that he's not following himself. And then there are other times where God's own are getting themselves into situations where they say, oh, I prayed about and asked God, and I believe he's leading me this way in the direction they wanted. And he said no such thing. Okay, and then they end up off on some other path that God cannot bless, that God cannot protect them on. When they run, and they're going to run into things they never had to run into before on that path. And then God usually gets a blame for that too. Pray. I prayed about it, but it fell apart anyway. I guess you just don't always understand God's plans. No, God's plans work. Mm. Yours don't. Mm. There are no spirit-led disasters. There are people-led ones, but no spirit-led ones. Mm. Okay. And then, you know, these ones who do that have these people around them who genuinely really do mean well just encouraging them and counseling them concerning that wrong path they're on that they bumped into all the stuff they didn't have to bump into with things like it's likely the devil attacking you because of the threat you are to him doing what you're doing <laughs> oh it's the devil attacking attacking all right mopping the floor with you <laughs> but it's because he has a legal right to okay 
Oh, but if you will pray. If you will pray, then ask God with an open, obedient heart, prepared to do anything he asks, and then hear his answer, and then you say, yes, sir, and you get right to it. Now, that's the path to victory. You win that way. Amen. Amen? Okay. Let's look at a couple of other counts in scriptures, okay? So when we see... Um, Let's look at some where we see God speak, he gives direction, and where we see those who listened, and then those who didn't, and how things end up for each. Okay, so go with me, if you will, to these two other accounts before we finish up. Go with me to 2 Kings chapter 7. 2 Kings chapter 7. This is a scenario. So, um, Syria is making war against Israel. And so God keeps tipping off this Elisha, the man of God, he's a prophet. He keeps tipping them off and telling them what their plans are. And then Elisha just goes back, sends a message to the king of Israel, tipping him off. You know, it's the greatest thing when you are connected to the one who knows everything. I mean, we have got inside information. So when there's something we need to know, okay, the ones who don't know God, they're not going to know it. Oh, but we can know it. If we'll ask him, he knows everything. And so Elisha... God just tips them off and says, hey, this is what they're going to do. And so now, every time they have this plan to attack them and stuff, it gets exposed. And now Syria's king is ticked off. And he's just saying, who's telling the plans here? Who among us is letting Israel know our plans? And um, so they said to him, they go, it's not us. It's this guy, Elisha, over there with Israel. Hallelujah. And God tells that guy everything. Woo! And so a serious king sends an army out to get him. He says, then go get that guy. Go get him. And so, and remember that part in scripture, this is the part where, you know, Elisha goes out with his servant and the servant looks out and he's going, oh, like, look at all the armies because this whole army has surrounded them. And he said, God, please open his eyes so he can see that the armies of yes. God that are with us are far greater wow. than this yeah. army here. And remember, he opened the servant's eyes and he's going, yes. like, this is not, a, this is not even a fair fight, right? God is going to clean up yes. here. Okay. And so anyways, what happens is this army then is struck blind. That whole evil Assyrian's army is struck blind. And so Elisha leads them over into Samaria, into this walled city. And then when God, and he says, okay, Lord, now I ask you to open their eyes. And when their eyes are open, they're like, they're all in, in this walled enclosure in Syria. And so the king of Israel is just like, how will we kill them all? Let's, why well, got them in the hall, in the walls here, let's kill them all. And so Elisha says, no. Feed them and send them back. So they're like, okay, so he sends, feeds, they feed them, send them back. And then the Bible says that they leave, they now they leave Israel alone. Okay? Now, but sometime later, the Syrian king comes and besieges the same Samaria. Okay, that means no supplies in or out. The plan is to starve them out in there. Okay? And so the king even overhears women, the king of Israel, he overhears these women squabbling about eating their babies, right? Like, I ate my baby, we, ate, we had agreement here, we ate my baby yesterday, and so we're supposed to eat your baby today. You, desperation will get you to do, okay, there's a lot of dumb things going on, on the planet right now. Yeah. Desperation. Yeah. People doing dumb things they would never do, agreeing to dumb things they would never do, and they're paying the consequences for it now. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, here, so there, this, he hears this. And so he's, I mean, he's distraught. He decides, you know, okay, that's it. Now it's time to chop off Elisha's head. And you're going, what? Like, how logical is that? What's that going to accomplish? Yeah. You know, chop off Elisha's head. Elisha's the guy who's been telling you all the plans. Mm -hmm. Like, he's the one who's got the connection, the one who knows everything. You know, chop his head off. Okay. So God loops Elisha in again, go figure. And so he says to his servant, he says, look, there's going to be guys coming here, chop my head off. And so don't let this Dorothy translation, don't let the guy in. And so they arrive and he says, you know, a few steps after that guy shows up, the king's going to be following him too. And so anyways, they, they, um, that all happens and, uh, the king follows shortly behind. And, um, so then we pick up a chapter seven. Okay, because now Elisha now is telling the king and the ones with him what God says he is going to go down. God's words about this. Okay, so they will have a choice either to believe his words through Elisha and heed them or not to. Okay, verse one, then Elisha said, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, tomorrow about this time. 
a measure of finely milled flour will sell for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Then the royal officer whose arm the king leaned answered the man of God and said, if the Lord should make windows of heaven for the rain, could this thing take place? And Elisha said, behold, you will see it with your own eyes. And because you doubt, you will not eat of it. Because you would, Dorothy translation, because you wouldn't listen, because you wouldn't listen and believe what God had said. Verse three. Now, four men who were lepers were at the entrance of the city's gate. Okay, so these guys start out at a huge disadvantage. Okay, right? Like they're lepers. Talk about seemingly impossible. Okay, but the Bible says they say to one another, why should we sit here until we die? If we say we'll enter the city, because the lepers were not allowed to do that, right? Be around the people. If we say we'll enter the city, well, then the famine is in the city. We're going to die there. If we sit here, we'll die also. So now, come let us go to the camp of the Arameans, the Syrians. Okay, now, he, understand this. Here is some divinely inspired reasoning going on for the, with these guys. God is coming to their aid and also to the aid of his people suffering inside those walls. Okay, and it goes on to say, these, these lepers go on to say, if they let us live, we are the Syrian army. If they let us live, we'll live. And if they kill us, we will only die. <laughs> you think so? If they kill us, we'll die. Verse 5, so they got up at twilight to go to the Aramean camp, but when they came to the edge of the camp, there was no one there. For the Lord had caused the Aramean army to hear the sound of chariots and the sound of horses, the sound of a great army. They had said to one another, the king of Israel has hired against us the king of the Hittites and the king of the Egyptians to come and fight against us. Right? Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed God would choose to do it that way? They wouldn't have been able to guess that. Right now, watch, remember the scripture that we've done, that we've read over the last few weeks. Isaiah 48, 17. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord, your God, who teaches you to profit, <coughs> meaning to excel, to rise above, okay. to prosper. I'm the one who would teach you how to do that, who leads you in the way you should go. So God has a way for you to go in that situation that's in front of you. And that way will work for you. But you're going to have to ask him, then listen to him, and do what he said. That's right. So he, God had a way for these, um, these fellas here. Okay, he had a way. And he had a way to deal with this army and solve this problem. Okay, so, so God has given his word, right, about the flour and the barley being sold for a shekel with no hint to how he's going to accomplish that. He didn't tell them that part. Right? They were just going to have to believe them. Okay? And it looked impossible concerning the circumstances. But God. Right. right? Yeah. But God. And so it's time we believe what God says. And stop trying to figure out how he's going to do it. That's not our job. Verse 7. So the Arameans set out and fled during the twilight, left their tents, horses, and donkeys, even the camp, just as it was, and fled for their lives. When these lepers came to the edge of the camp, they went in one tent and ate and drank and carried out the silver and the gold and the clothing. They went and hid them. Then they went back into another tent and carried some valuable things from there also yes. went and hid them. Then they said to one another, then their conscience kind of had a voice. And they're like, they said to another, you know what? We're not doing the right thing. This is a day of good news. Yeah, we're keeping it silent. If we wait till morning, some punishment for not reporting this now is going to come on us. So now let's go and tell the king's household. Okay, so let's tell the others inside the walls that are, they're starving death. They're eating each other kids in there, okay? Uh, let's tell them. So, verse 10. So they came, they called to the gatekeepers of the city, because they're not just allowed in, right? They're lepers. And he told them, hey, we went to the camp of the Arameans. And behold, there's no one there, right? Nor the sound of man there. Only the horses and the donkeys tied up. The tents have been left just as they were. Then the gatekeepers called out, and it was reported to the king's household inside the city. Then the king got up in the night and he said to his servants, I will tell you what the Arameans have done to us. They know we're hungry. And so they have left the camp to hide themselves in the open country, thinking that when we come out of the city, we can take them alive and get into the city. Okay, here we go again. This king and his wild ideas, right? And, um, you know, Elisha and God have been his help 
that he thinks is a good idea to chop Elisha's head off. And now in fairness, you got to understand, he's inside these walls where his people are starving, they're eating their kids. So that kind of trauma can certainly do some things to a person that you're not thinking quite right. right. Okay, verse 13. One of his servants replied, please let us take men... Let, let us take some men of five of the horses which remain inside the city. Consider this. If they're caught, then at worst, they'll be like all the people of Israel who left in the city, who are left in the city. city. And if they're killed, then they'll be all like the people of Israel who've already died. Right? So, so let's send them and see what happens. Notice he's not volunteering to be one of the five. Verse 14. So they took two chariots with horses and the king sent them after the Aramean army saying, go and see. Verse 15, then they went after them to the Jordan and all the road, so these five guys had out, all the road was lit, entirely littered with clothing and equipment with the Arameans, the Syrians, had thrown away when they had hurriedly fled. And the messengers returned and told the king. Okay, so like again, God can do anything. He's creative. You won't be able to guess how he's going to do it for you. Like Danielle with her salad for honest sakes. Who knew? Right? God looks after these things. Don't try and figure it out. Just believe that you've received it right when you prayed. Amen. Right? With his word on it, rich in you, and watch for it. Watch for it. Anything he tells you to do, do it. Right? Verse 16. Then the people of Israel went out and plundered the camp of the Arameans. So goods were so plentiful that a measure of finely milled flour was indeed sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in accordance with the word of the Lord as spoken through Elisha. Check. Done. Right? Now the king, verse 17, had appointed the royal officer, remember that guy? <laughs> On whose arm he leaned to be in charge of the city gate. So they put that guy in charge of the city gate, right? He's the one who said, yeah, right, right. If the Lord shall make windows of heaven for the rain, can this thing take place? Like Mr. Skeptic, yeah, right, I don't believe that, right? He knew better, right? Now the king watched, the, now the king had appointed that guy to be in charge of the city gate and the starving people trampled him <laughs> at the gate and they as they struggled through to get food and he died just as the man of God had foretold when the king came down to him. It doesn't pay to doubt God and argue with what he says. And it still doesn't pay for you and I to doubt God and argue with something he said. Because doing that still gives legal right to the devil to touch you. Okay, and he won't just be tossing your hair. Okay, he's there. To, he wants to take you out. Verse 18. So it happened just as Elisha, the man of God, had spoken to the king, saying, Two measures of barley will be sold for a shekel and a measure of finely milled flour for a shekel tomorrow, about this time at the gate of Samaria. Verse 19. The royal officer had answered the man of God and said, Now behold, even if the Lord should make windows of heaven, could such a thing happen? And Elisha had answered, You will see it with your own eyes, but because of your doubt, you will not eat it. Verse 20, and so it happened to him, for the people trampled him at the gate, and he died. Mm. Okay, now notice, God repeats it. <coughs> Did he forget he already said it? Mm. No, he repeats it. And if God feels the need to repeat it, mm. it's best we take note and not brush over these accounts. Mm. And if God feels the need to be repetitive in a message delivered here at Word Sundays... Mm. And notice in this account, God is not an either or. Remember we talked about that? God's not an either or. You have to have either this or that. No, God is about an and also. That's the way he rolls, right? right? And so here he's not an either or God either, right? And so once again, he's that and also God. So the lepers and the people got abundant provision. And the people of God got delivered out of the bondage trap that they were in, that the enemy had, you know, that God got sent running in fear. God did both for them. God's good. Amen. He's yes. always Amen. good. Amen. Always good. So God spoke through Elisha. And when there were those who listened, and then he who didn't. Okay? And then there were those who cooperated with God, the four lepers, even if they didn't realize they were. Right? Because they weren't even present to hear what God had spoken through Elisha. Okay? But God in his goodness 
God in his goodness, he just <clears throat> ensures that they would get his direction too. And he would be, go on to be able to use these ones as part of the plan and his solution for his people. Right? What an honor, right? What a privilege to be able to be cooperate with God to get something done on the earth for him. Amen? Amen. All right. Can you take one more account? We'll do it real quick. Next chapter, 2 Kings 8, 1 to 6. Now Elisha said to the Shunammite woman whose son he had restored to life. So you know that account, right? The Shunammite woman's di ch child dies and Elisha comes and sees to it that that little guy is raised to life again. Okay? So um, now Elisha said to the Shunammite woman whose son he had restored to life, prepare and go. So he is giving her an instruction from the Lord again. She is given direction here. And he says, prepare and go, you and your household. Stay temporarily wherever you can, for the Lord has called for a famine. And moreover, it will come on the land and continue for seven years. Okay? So the woman set out and did everything in accordance with the word of the man of God. This lady, this lady is not like God's own. Right? God told her through the prophet where to go and dwell temporarily. And off she went like she was told and dwelt temporarily. She wasn't about to be in the wooden listening crowd. Right? No, sir. Right? But God's own in Jeremiah 42. Oh, yeah. They defied God. Yeah. Wouldn't listen. Yeah. And went to dwell temporarily too. Where they thought was best. Okay. And both their outcomes were very different. It pays to stay out of the wooden listen crowd. Okay? So she and her household went and stayed temporarily as foreigners in the land of the Philistines for seven years. At the end of the seven years, the woman returned from the land of the Philistines and she went to appeal to the king of Israel for her house and her land. So apparently it got, while she was gone, it got taken. Now the king was talking with Gehazi. Now Gehazi was the servant of Elisha. Okay, and so he's, the king is talking to this Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, Elisha, saying, Tell me all the great things that Elisha has done. Mm -hmm. And verse 5, And just as Gehazi was telling the king how Elisha had restored the dead to life, behold, the woman whose son he had restored to life appeals to the king for her house and her land. Okay, like, come on, you can't make this stuff up. So Gehazi is telling the story of her, and in that very same moment, she, that very woman, is standing there making an appeal to that same king here in the story for her house and land. Come on, yeah. only God. Does it pay to stay out of the wouldn't listen crowd? Mm -hmm. Right? Let's not be counted in the wouldn't listen crowd. Right? And Gehazi says, O oh Lord, O oh King, this is the woman, and this is her son, whom Elisha restored to life. When the king asked the woman, she told him everything. So the king appointed for her a certain high official saying, restore everything that was hers, including all the produce of the field since the day she left the land until now. Amen. <laughs> okay, do you see this? Do you see this? It's not either or. God's a, and also. He's a abundant provision. You know, Amen. cup runs over kind of supply God. That's just who he is. He can't help himself. Right? Like you think when he says, you know, that he's going to pour so your cup runs over. Does he not know where the top of the cup is? Oh, no, no. He knows where the top. No, no. He's an abundantly Amen. providing God. Yes. If you actually believe that. And so this woman gets her house and her land back and all the produce that had come off the land while she had been gone. Right? It's not either or. It's but also. Yes. Okay. And why can God do all this for her? Because she's one who listens to what he tells her. Yeah. Okay? It pays to stay out of the wouldn't listen crowd. Right. If you want to see the arrival into the scene realm of what you're believing God for, you're going to have to be one who listens and does what God asks of you. No way around it. And it matters not, right? Like you can go quote a whole bunch of scroll the scriptures you want or how often you read them before you go and declare them in prayer. Because if you won't listen and do what God told you, you're going to get nowhere. Period. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay. 
let's just, let's pray. Let's pray. Now, I just want to, I want to speak to you that are out there by link for a moment here. You may be listening to me right now and you're saying, but I don't know God like that. Like, I have been in the wooden listening crowd for a long time, or maybe I, you know, maybe I haven't. But all I know is I don't have a relationship with God like that. And I want to. Right. Because it starts there. We understand that it starts there. So let's just pray together. If that's you and you want to be in relationship with God, you've got to come through Jesus to the Father. So just pray with me as I pray. And you can make a choice now to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. And then you can be included as one of God's own. And then everything that's written here in this book now becomes yours, is available to you. Okay? So just pray with me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, Jesus I've lived my life without you. I don't want that anymore. I want a relationship with you. I want a relationship with God. I've done dumb stuff. I've done dumb stuff. I know I have. And I repent of it. I believe you went to the cross. You took all my sin. Everything that's out of the curse. You took for me. So I wouldn't have to have it. That's what I want. That's what I want. So I give my life to you now. So I give my life to you now. I make you my Lord. I make you my Lord. My boss. My boss. And I submit my life to you now. And I submit my life to you now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so when you've done that, get yourself a Bible if you don't have one. And then go to a church. Ask God. God, where do you want me to go? We've been talking here today about God asking direction. What should we do, God? Ask God, where does he want you to go to church? Because now it's time to learn and grow what's here in the manual. And God will have the right place that he wants you to go to and to tap in. Okay? And so that you can connect in there and you can learn and you can grow. Amen. Okay? Amen. All right. So let's pray about everything we've just talked about. Yes. Okay? Yes. Father, we just confess to you right now yes. all the times in which we didn't listen. All the times we pretended we didn't hear you because we didn't like what you told us. Father, we repent now. We don't want to be that way anymore. We don't choose that. We receive our forgiveness. You said if we confess our sins, we just got to confess them, that you're faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So we confess to your sins now and we receive our forgiveness. We receive our cleansing of all the unrighteousness. And we purpose in our hearts now with your help to ask you, hear what you tell us and then go on and do from what it is that you said. Direct us, guide us, speak to us. We welcome it, Lord. We need it. Yes. And to you be the glory forever yes. and ever. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You, okay. Jesus. We're going to take communion. We haven't done communion for the end of April, I think was the last time. So we're going to take communion. Now, communion, again, it's that covenant we, you know, when we have surrendered our lives to Jesus Christ, we now have entered into a covenant mm -hmm. with him. And so when we take communion, we are on purpose reminding ourselves of the covenant that we have with God. And we're reminding ourselves again of everything Jesus did at the cross, everything he did for us, and everything that is ours now as a result of what he did at the cross. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and so what we're going to do again, yeah. if you can, yeah, if what we're going to do again is we're just going to give a few minutes um, uh, to just the scriptures say that we need to not do this lightly. He said, God said this. He said, if you do this mm -hmm. and you take communion flippantly and your heart is not right before God, He said that's why there are ones that are weak and sick. And some sleep in death amongst right. you. Yeah. It's a serious thing. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we're just going to take a few minutes. It's not hard. Just to ask, so get our hearts right. If there are things that are, just say, Lord, is there something that you want to talk to me about? I'm going to put it right, right now before I take communion.
Okay? So we'll take a few minutes to do that and just ask God's forgiveness in any areas where we've missed the mark and just to be sure that you're taking communion with that's just not a religious exercise, but rather with honor for the Lord, honor for our master and accepting everything that his sacrifice provided. Okay? Let's take a few minutes. on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. He broke it in pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. suffered on the cross so our bodies could be healed. Amen. He took every sickness and disease on himself so we wouldn't ever have to have it. Amen. So we do not need to let it continue in our bodies. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did. Thank you for taking our sin. Thank you for taking anxiety. Thank you for taking everything that's out of the curse. You took it on yourself to make a way so we would never have to live with it. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. So in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death. So 
thank you, Father, again for Jesus. Thank you for what is represented by the juice, the blood of Jesus shed. It had to be that blood shed for our sin, for every wrong thing we have ever done, will do. Your blood was shed so that we could go to heaven to be, so we could be Hallelujah. forgiven and cleansed of all unrighteousness, and that we could one day spend heaven with you. That we could, we would have the freedom and privilege of choosing Jesus, so that we could depart from here when that time comes and go there in the presence of God forever and not in a lost eternity in hell. We don't choose that. And thank you for making it available for with what you did at the cross. It's all about what you, Jesus, did at the cross. And we're so grateful. And we remember again here today in Jesus' name. just going to give a few minutes um, right now. So if anybody remember last week, you know, if there may be those of you who this week you've been searching the scriptures on something, you want prayer of agreement with anyone that there's got Al, Karen, Ingrid, Patrick, myself, uh, we will agree with you in prayer. We have our oil here. Okay. And, but you know what we're going to ask you, right? You know what we're going to ask you, right? What are you believing for? Based on, not just what are you believing for, what are you believing for based on what God said to you this week from here in the Word? Those words of His that you've been filling yourself with all week. So that faith is now there because faith comes in these words. Faith comes by hearing and hearing these words. And then faith is the thing that gets the thing done. Yes. Okay? Right? So if anyone, we'll just the lead team is here to pray with anybody who uh, is ready to do that, wants to do that. Amen.